Today's demo is a chainmail bracelet um, and I've encaptured the gemstones, beautiful adventuring rounds, um, completely inside this tube of chainmail. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're using uh, in, in, in a diameter 5 mil jump rings and in a diameter 3 mil jump rings, you only need a few of the 3 mil, but you, you use most of your 200 um, of the 5 mil. Then you need an, um, enough aventurine to do the length you want. Um, that's about seven inches plus the chain. I know it sounds big, but bear in mind it's chunky, so you have to make the bracelet bigger to be able to, to accommodate your wrist. Okay. Then you need flat nose and chain nose, or you can use a bent pliers, um, but basically two pairs of pliers, round nose pliers, bear with, and a little scrap of wire. You can use beading thread instead, it doesn't matter. All it is to do is to, to secure the, the gemstones until you take it out. So it's just easier to have a firm um, fitting rather than them all loose. Right, let's get cracking. So we're going to start off with one of our... Oh, start off by opening your jump rings. So I pre -open, I'd pre -open, I was pre-opening them in batches rather than doing the whole lot of them because they when you put them together they can snag and it makes it harder to pick them up so pre-open i don't know 20 or so um and then do another batch when you've gone so far of your jump rings you're starting off um with four closed of your three mil and you're going to open up one of your jump rings for those of you who are new to chain mail and jump rings you're not going to open that way, you're going to twist so that they open a gap and then you can twist them back. If you open them the other way, you can't get that round back. So we're going to slide on our four um, threes. Now, these are nice and pliable. Oops, let me get me other pliers. Um, but it, it's easier to do two pliers. And there we go. And close it up. So that's our starting point. We're now going to put one of the five mil in each of the threes. So we're going to pick up one of the five mil and pop it in each of the three mil jump rings. On the way around, fetch them down here. The larger jump rings I find I can close like that. So it's your choice. It's probably not the recommended way, but since when do I do things the recommended way? <laughs> so we're just going to close those up. When you're doing it on the bracelet, um, it becomes a little bit more difficult because you need the extra space. Just get that one in there. But the start is just nice and easy. Just make sure you're getting that click and close properly. OK, so that's our starting point. We're now going to pop that. The round nose pliers are just to put a loop in the bottom so that it doesn't fall off. And that's just to help these not fall off the end. Now initially that will just fall straight off the end if I let it. I'm going to thread on my aventurine. Make sure your length of wire, this is obviously a shorter length of wire, however you can make earrings, but make sure your length of wire is plenty long enough because you won't be able to add in. So I'm just going to pop those on there. And now we're going to bead around them. So if I turn this upside down, I'm just going to pop a little loop this side to secure it. And it just gives you that firm footing now. So our beads aren't going to fall off the end. And we're going to work down so our jump rings won't fall off this end. Now at the moment they're all loose. And you find this stage it's all a bit fiddly. So we're going to pick up our next. Now where we've got each of these, which are overlapping... So each of the um, five mils we've just added, we're actually going to join the neighbours together. So we're going to go through one, out through the next one, and close. Okay, and when, when you get going a bit more, it's easier to do it lying down, but at the moment they, they don't hold together in a circle. So we're going to pick up that one. Go through to the next one. And close. That one. 
through to the next one. And then from there on, it, it, it it's repetition. But the start, it's the same with everything. I don't care if it's seed beads, uh, wire work, whatever. The start is the fiddly bit. Right, so the last two. Pop you in place. Try to hold those so I can get underneath. There we go. And close. I mean, this you can adjust the size of the jump rings to accommodate different size beads. Um, so we've got four around. Don't worry about these sticking up. We're going to use those later. So we've now got four going round, and we're going to continue adding the next layer to each of the layers going down. Now you do that for the length of your work. So I've got a short length here that's already done. And you can see how that starts caging and it's just adding four beads at a time going around. Then when you get to the other end of your work, so we're going to now add on our um, smaller jump rings. And we're going to go one through each of the last of the um, five mils. So we're just going to close those up. Um, making sure you're getting the right ones. In there. And do make sure they shut properly because if you don't, you'll get a, a scratchy um, bit. Of, it's not likely to come out if you if you because that one was sort of crossing. It's not likely to come out, but if they they don't uh, sit flush, then they they'll scratch your skin. Not badly, but you'll feel it. Your finish won't be so good. So close that one up. See. Sometimes they'll just cross over, just ease that in the position. There we go. Make sure it's flush. So now we've got the smaller ones in, we're going to take another of the bigger ones and we're going to feed all of the small ones in, making sure they're all from the same direction. Okay, and I'm going to go underneath that wire. Get one through there. Pull that bit of wire up through the last one and close it up. Right, it's not quite. Come on. I think I've done this a little bit tighter than I did before, which is why I'm struggling to get that through. But you want to go through that last jump ring, pop it in place, and close that up. Go. I shall tidy that up in a moment. Now we've got our fully encased um, strip. Like I say, that makes great earrings. We're just going to trim off. Make sure you don't cut your jump rings. We're going to trim off that wire, and then we can slide it through. Now they're fully enclosed, and we can go back to this jump ring and just tidy that join up there. So now we need to add the um, the rest of them. So whether you're going to add on um, whether you're going to add on a clasp, whether you're going to add on um, some chain, because you could actually have that as a neck piece, or whether you're going to add on earring uh, findings, you're going to need to bring those four jump rings together. And this is the hardest part with these is actually finding where they are. So I'm going in two by two. So I'm picking up two of the smaller ones. And I'm going to close it. There we go. And the same on the other side. But by putting that flat one on, you're actually stopping stopping these beads coming out. So I'm going to pop that one on there. And now we can pull those together. So now we can fetch those next two together. And on the 
bracelet I've then done a, a two by two chain so that's two jump rings in two so you can see we've come those two jump rings we've set fetched together with that one but I'm going to put two jump rings in each now and where's the there it is there we go and then if I just pick that up on there you'll be able to see see how it's um, forming now so whether you've then put a an earring hook in that or create a little two by two chain like I've done here and then put your clasp on the end you're good to go and there you've got your chainmail bracelet